I wanna get real with you guys today, realer than I normally get. I mean, I'm always pretty real with you guys, but today I wanna to talk about self-sabotage and how deep it can go. And I'm gonna use my own story as an example. This is gonna be hard to talk about because it's kind of cringy when I even look back at some of the stuff that I'm going to share with you guys in terms of me not getting the message from the universe that pursuing my musical career, pursuing a career as an artist was what I was destined to do. And I was getting so many signs and I was always backing away from the positive reinforcement that I was getting from the universe because I had a childhood program. I had a program that was running from early, early, early on in my life that I didn't have what it takes to be an artist, that I didn't have the ability and the skill and the talent and the work ethic to actually create a career as an artist. So every time I got a piece of positive feedback from the universe, I took it as a fluke. I took it as an anomaly. I couldn't step into the identity of, yes, I deserve this. I deserve this success that I'm getting, or I deserve these results that I'm getting. Because it was always out of my identity and my reality as somebody who never believed that I could be an artist. And it was only when I started cleaning up those deep-seated childhood limiting beliefs. And you guys know me. This is why I talk so much about the inner child and becoming more aware through meditation and all of this stuff we talk about in my new community, The Creative Sangha. And we go really deep because I truly believe that anybody that has a creative impulse has to, to navigate these internal feelings of not feeling like you're enough. Because if you don't, you're going to find yourself getting results from the universe and not believing in those results and sabotaging yourself. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about some very concrete examples from my own life. So let's take it back to 2019. <clears throat> I, at the beginning of the year, set a few goals for myself. I was like, these are the things that I wanna accomplish in my music career. And one of those goals was to get 10 million streams on Spotify. Another one was to play at Terminal 5, which is this epic venue in New York that I had seen so many of my favorite artists play at. And I was like, damn, it would be really cool to play at Terminal 5. I really wanna manifest that. And the other goal was to get on the cover of a Spotify for Artists playlist. So come the end of the year, I had achieved every single one of those goals. It was wild. And the way it happened was through all these crazy synchronicities and ways that I could have never planned for or roadmapped or expected, but it happened. It was like the universe was giving me a rope and being like, yes, here you go. I'm going to help you out right now. Pay attention. Pay attention to these things that are manifesting in your life. And all of those things happen. Then 2020 came along. We all know what happened in 2020. COVID hit. I had a whole tour lined up. It all kind of fell apart. I also had a really intense relationship that took up a lot of my emotional energy. But long story short, I lost faith in the process. The process that had gotten me to those results in 2019. What was that process? Well, in my case, it was just creating music and putting it out as an independent artist, not overthinking it not trying to get signed to a label, not trying to do anything fancy, just creating the music that I wanted to create and just consistently putting it out. And I stopped doing that in 2020. I got in my head, largely because of all the things that were happening in the outside world, like COVID and this relationship that I was going through. But I started thinking, oh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Or like, I don't know what's going on. Even though I had just gotten all these results in 2019. And I really got in my head and I started making music that I still enjoyed, but it was, it had more strategy to it than just this pure expression that had gotten me to where I had wanted to be before. It had this um, agenda to, that I wanted to try to play in these clubs in Tulum that I was like really enjoying. And I wanted to make music that was more underground or cool or edgy. And I kind of strayed from what my heart, what my soul wanted to create. And honestly, I've been on this journey in the last three years of reclaiming and coming back to that original innocence, that original creative impulse that I started on when I first started releasing music in 2017 that got me to those results in 2019. 
in only two or three years in a very short amount of time. In fact, my second song that I ever put out was Arthi, which a lot of you guys know, and that song totally blew up. And it kind of reminds me of this quote from the book, The Alchemist, which is one of my favorite books of all time by Paulo Coelho. And in the book, there is a young man who's embarking on his personal legend, they call it, like his hero's journey. And there's a wise sage, there's a man that, that this young man goes to, and the man tells him that when you find your personal legend, when you find your dharma, as we would call it in the Indian tradition, when you find your purpose, your path, your mission, whatever you want to call it, the universe will give you a quick win. The universe will give you a quick sign that you're on the right path. And for me, that sign was Arthi. But because for so much of my life, I had this model running in my head that I'm not gonna be able to make it as an artist. I had so many destructive negative beliefs that, oh, artists don't make money. It's hard to make it as an artist. You have to be this like prodigy, super talented at an instrument or something like that to make it. I'm not cool enough to make it as an artist. I'm not extroverted enough. I don't know enough people in the industry. I had all these faulty beliefs. So every time that I would get some sort of evidence, I would just kind of shake it off. And I would just feel like, oh, this must just be an anomaly. So that's what happened to me with Arthi. That's what happened to me in 2019 when all of those things happened. And then in 2020, instead of just saying, oh shit, I'm on the right path. Let me buckle down and keep going. I was like, oh no, I don't know. This isn't working. And now COVID happened and I don't know what to do. Like, And I, I just totally got way into my own head to the point where even right now, as I'm trying to explain to you guys, I don't even really know what happened. And that's the way that these limiting beliefs work. They take over you. And if you're not aware, you look back a few months later or a year later and you're like, what the hell was going on? It's feel, it feels like something else was running you. And in a way it was, it was that negative subconscious limiting belief, that program that was running you. So fast forward to last year, I was making a song a day for 100 days. You guys might remember this. I, I made a commitment to make 100 songs in 100 days. And about a quarter of the way through that, I got news that I had actually won a remix competition. Well, me, I was one of four people that won this remix competition out of like thousands and thousands of entries. And this remix competition was sponsored by Microsoft and Beatport. So this happened in April. I must have entered the competition in like February. And I remember when I entered it, it was like, I made the track in like 30 minutes. It was just a quick remix. Every now and then I'll enter a remix competition, never really expecting to win because there's so many people entering it. I kind of just do it as a fun exercise just to produce and you know get out of my comfort zone and make something new or unique or different. So long story short, I get an email around mid-April of last year while I'm in the middle of this producing 100 songs in 100 days process that I did which I'm really excited about because a lot of those songs are gonna be coming out soon, finally. So I'm excited to share those with you. And I get this email from Microsoft. And at first I'm like, this must be fake. And there it is again, there's that limiting belief. This could not be happening to me, this must be fake. But it wasn't, it was an actual email from Microsoft. They said, congratulations, you won the remix. We're gonna fly you out to Ibiza with the three other winners. You're gonna meet the artists of the remix competition that you won, Julian Asia amazingly talented two Italian artists, Italian duo. You're going to do a DJ set on top of a freaking castle in Ibiza, or Ibiza, <laughs> as I should say. You're gonna to get to attend IMS, International Music Summit, which is like one of the biggest dance conferences in the world. And all of this stuff happens. And I go and I have this amazing like peak experience. It was like one of the best experiences of my year because it was just so, affirming of all the hard work that I had been doing. And it was almost like the universe was paying attention and watching and saying like, I see you boy, like I see you putting in that work. I see you making a song every single day for a hundred days and I'm gonna reward you in this mystical way that you could have never planned. All expenses paid trip to Ibiza. So I go there, I go to Ibiza, I have this amazing time and it's so validating, right? Like these brands are like, yo, like this music is amazing. The artists that I look up to are like, yeah, your remix was incredible. I got all this free gear, like free speakers from the sponsors, all this stuff. And then I go there and I connect with so many people at the conference and I come back and again, slowly but surely the self-doubt creeps in. The 
automatic pattern that I've been running, the subconscious pattern of, yeah, but I'm not really like good enough to make it as, as to really like make it as an artist at a high level, right? Like I can't be good enough. And it's, it's crazy to even say it like this, you know, right now, like I think about the amount of times that music has pleasantly surprised me, the amount of times that the universe has just laid a reward or a result for music in front of me that I could have never expected or never planned for. I think that's what can happen when we're run with self-doubt is the rational part of our brain jumps in and tries to figure out and control how everything's gonna happen in the future. It's like, well, I can't make money as an artist. How am I gonna make money? And we try to come up with a plan. And because there isn't really a lot of evidence in our current reality that that plan will work, we give up on the plan. And I'm not saying it's not it's uh, not good to be responsible financially. Like you should definitely think about how you're gonna make ends meet and how you can support yourself so that you can continue to pursue whatever it is that you feel like you're here to pursue. For so many years, I ignored all of the signs and evidence from the universe that was coming to me and telling me and knocking on the door over and over again saying, wake up, like we're giving you all of this positive affirmation. We're giving you all of these serendipitous things. You know, you meet the right person there. Uh, I'll actually tell you guys one more quick story about Arthi because I know a lot of people love that song. The way that that song even made it uh, so it was already doing kind of well and like kind of going viral in the Indian community. But the way that it made it to Austin Kramer, who at the time was the head of all of dance music for Spotify, was that my brother-in-law at the time, who was a dentist, was operating on Austin Kramer's fiance at the time. And he was playing, uh, like she was, she was getting, a, I don't know if he's operating, but she was like there at the dentist. So Austin Kramer, who's like this big guy at Spotify, is sitting in my, uh, my brother-in-law's um, lobby of his dentist's office and my brother-in-law is playing my song Arthi and he Austin Kramer asks him like what is this song this is really cool and he's like oh this is my brother-in-law actually and then like a week later I woke up and my friend who lives on the other side of the country was like dude your song is like on all these big playlists and it's getting like 50 mil uh, 50 thousand streams a day like this is crazy so there's again an example of like how could you ever plan for that if someone asked me like what's your plan to release Arthi there's no way I'm gonna say like, oh, I'm just gonna like wait for that to happen. Like that's not a plan, but it's the universe meeting me halfway and giving me little bread breadcrumbs, like a trail of hints. Hey, you're on the right path. And what happens when we have limiting beliefs, early childhood embedded limiting beliefs that we're not worthy or capable of the life that we want, of the thing that we so desperately want, we will continue to ignore the most obvious signs, like all the things that I've talked about in this video. And so I share that with you guys today to challenge you and give you a charge. Whatever it is that you feel in your heart that you want to pursue, that your rational mind has convinced you time and time again, and maybe you've even gotten that message from people in your life who really care about you, um, who think that you can't do it, that your rational mind has convinced you time and time again that this is not going to work. I want you to just think about that thing and think about, has the universe, has life rewarded me for that thing? Has life surprised me with a chance encounter with someone or a chance opportunity? And if you notice that the thing that your heart wants to do, when you do give it attention, it seems to reward you back. Maybe not in the ways that you expect and maybe not in a way that is big enough yet for you to like quit your job and go, to, go do that thing. I'm not saying it doesn't take patience and a lot of trust because that's what this is all about is trusting, jumping into the unknown jumping into the void only to find that it's a bed of feathers as Terrence McKenna would say. But I want you to ask yourself that about whatever it is that your creative pursuit is. Maybe you want to make paper mache statues of horses. Maybe you want to be a singer. Maybe you want to start a company. Maybe you want to be a meditation teacher, whatever it is. That is my charge to you guys. I sat down and did this exercise the other day and I had tears in my eyes while I was doing this because it was so wild to actually sit down and list all of the crazy shit that has happened to me with music that I would have never expected. Like the universe just being like, hey, come this way. And every time it does that, I'm so scared and shut off and cloistered into my own uh, make-believe world of my own limitations based on these unhelpful stories that I learned along the way in my life before I had the critical thinking to actually 
look at those stories and be like, this isn't true. This is someone else's bullshit projected onto me that doesn't apply to me. Or this is just not true. I was so stuck in those delusions, those delusions of my own limitation that I couldn't see the clear writing on the wall from the universe saying, bro, I'm trying to give you a hand here, but you gotta like meet me halfway. I can't do this for you. And when I sat down and made that list, it became so abundantly clear to me that music is my path. It doesn't mean that it's the only thing I do. Like I'm doing all this other shit. As you guys know, I started this community, which is largely all about helping other artists not go through the shit that I went through, the creative sangha. It's all about healing that stuff so that you can actually pay attention and listen and step into the self-worth, step into the internal abundance so that you feel like you're actually worthy of what life is giving you. And you're not sabotaging yourself and stepping away from it. It's not that music's the only thing I need to do, but when I sat down and made that list, I realized it was so abundantly clear to me, pay attention to what life is giving you breadcrumbs of rewards for, especially the ones that are serendipitous, especially the ones that are spontaneous and seem to come out of nowhere that you can't quite explain. Because that's telling you that there is a magic hand, there's a magic sparring partner, there's a magic tango partner with you that's taking the next step with you and leading you where to go. And the better you can get at listening, which is why meditation is so important, and the better you can get at believing that you deserve to take that next step that you're being invited into, which is why healing your limiting beliefs is so important. This is why these are the two pillars of what I'm teaching with my coaching clients and what I do on myself and what I'm doing in the creative sangha. The third pillar being actually showing up and creating art, which you can only do if you're successfully listening and believing yourself. This is why those three things are so paramount for anyone who's trying to do something that requires stepping into the unknown, which is all artists and all creatives. So I hope that video gave you guys a little insight that I am very much on this journey like all of you. And I'm sure that this will not be the last time that I notice the way that I may have self-sabotaged or I may have held myself back from stepping into the, the greatness that the universe is trying to show me that I have, that I believe we all have in our zone of genius, in our area of genius. But just to say that together, as we become aware of this in community, we can help each other and can call each other out when we're noticing that we're slipping in our awareness or in our belief in ourself. So I love you guys. I hope this was helpful. Drop a comment if you resonated with this, if you resonated with any of this. And if you want to go deep, if you're sick and tired of just watching these videos or watching other people's videos or listening to audiobooks and podcasts and you know, you're, you're on Instagram looking at memes like, oh, love yourself, believe in yourself. And you're just like, okay, but how the fuck do I actually do that? The creative sangha is how you fucking do that. And I say that with like zero hesitation because I know the journey that I've been through to create this community. And I know how powerful it already is for the people that have joined. And it's really just a more affordable option than my private coaching. So if you're serious about this and if you resonate, I mean, some people just really have that awareness already or they already are like good and they're like you know no i i know that i'm gonna do this and like that's amazing but that just hasn't been my story and i know that isn't the story for a lot of artists and that's why i created the creative sangha so check that out if you want to go deeper um the links are everywhere you can find it and i love you guys peace